Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. We're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We have an email here from Joe. Hi, Ben and Nathan. I'm a super splitter candidate looking for a way to differentiate myself. I have a 3.1 GPA and 175 LSAT on the record score, not just a PT. But recent cycles have shown that a high LSAT isn't sufficient for a T14. I'm strongly considering the big law route, but my dream is to work in sports law. Would writing about my hours spent reading the 456-page NFL, CBA, and part-time work at Pro Football Focus Oh, sorry. You spent hours reading the 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 collective bargaining agreement for the NFL and separately you did part-time work at Pro Football Focus. I have no idea what that is. Would that be an interesting PS topic or is it too irrelevant slash uninteresting for most admissions officers? Also, I know it's probably not wise, but would it make any sense to retake the LSAT? I'm not applying to Yale and that's the only school with a 175 median. But would getting a 180 make any difference or would it be purely for ego? Thanks, Joe. OK, we got two questions here. I think writing about any sort of work can be interesting. Um, I am a little concerned about you writing about your hours spent reading the CBA. Like, what is it you trying to be an attorney? Like, look, I'm already an attorney. Well, so and like the the totally natural default like if if i i feel i feel warm feelings for joe right because joe's writing into our podcast i want to help joe but if this is a random person in the middle of 5000 applications to my school and joe yep. is bragging about reading the collective bargaining agreement for the NFL and then i look at joe's 3.1 gpa and i go why did you spend guy. your time <laughs> not that good at school like makes poor choices about where he spends his time Yep. Right. Now, you might not have been reading that while you were still in undergrad or whatever, but just be careful of the, you know, the inferences that you might allow somebody to draw by the facts you're presenting. The part time yeah. work at Pro Football Focus, whatever that is, that sounds interesting, right, Ben? For sure. It's work and uh, potentially related to your interest in sports law. Um, but again, that's. That too raises eyebrows, right? How many people go into sports law, but how many people say they want to go into sports law? Yeah. I feel like we hear people all the time like, oh, I'd love to do this, but I don't know how much of a field it is. It would be nice. I mean, it sounds like maybe you have some experience there because of this pro football focus. I, again, I don't know what that is either. But It's just much more, I think, if you targeted your personal statement toward like big law, that makes sense, right? Yeah, I've got a real high LSAT. Yeah, I don't have a great undergrad, but I've got a real high LSAT and I want to do big law that the law schools are going to go. OK, let's listen to this guy. The fact that you have this fantasy of working in sports law someday, I would keep that probably in my pocket because there's just too many like super naive people who say shit like that. Sports law, entertainment law, you know, international law. Yeah. And you're coming in with this low GPA, right? Like that. Exactly. Right. If you were <laughs> high GPA, high LSAT, then you can kind of say whatever you really want to do. I just wouldn't. And, and I'm not encouraging people to lie, by the way. I'm just saying, Joe, you might want to edit yourself. And uh, focusing this towards sports law and football, I think it just sounds like every other kid who hasn't really thought through their plan. I'm, yeah. I'm painting with a real broad brush, but that's just from my experience of like the, the people that I've met in 15 years of doing this. There's so many people who say things like sports law and entertainment law. Yeah. And you just don't want to put yourself in their in their bucket. What is that? That's like a thinking fast and, fl and slow thing, huh? That's like a heuristic thing. Yeah, you're you're making a snap judgment based on these trends. We're, we're but putting it's... like with like. Yeah. So the second you say sports law, I go, oh, you're one of those. Yeah. And that can be totally wrong, right? I don't I'm I'm probably wrong in making that judgment. Could be. But people are doing that. And admissions officers are almost certainly doing that, whether it's good for them or not. Yeah. So and then I just you combine that with a low GPA, it reinforces that bucket because that bucket 
I could be wrong here, but I think it tends to be filled with people who have lower GPAs and who are into sports. And it's like, okay, do you just want to like go to law school, but you really like sports? There's, there's a whole bunch of thoughts that are associated with this group. Yeah. I'm reminded of that. Uh, did I tell you when I was reading, uh, listening to that podcast and they said that they, they had a couple facts right up the, right up at the top that kind of blew my mind about how we, we make a big deal out of sports, right? Mm. But this podcast told me that Sherwin Williams paint stores is bigger than the entire NFL. That's wild. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and Exxon Mobil is bigger than all professional sports worldwide. That's less shocking to me. I mean, it's still shocking, but I also just think of Exxon Mobil as like almost like another country. <laughs> right. But there are many <laughs> other giant corporations that are also like another country. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And for that to dwarf all of professional sports everywhere. So like there's no soccer. There's no NFL. There's no NBA. There's no like all of those things are in just one of these giant behemoth companies as far yeah. as just the size of the operation that we're talking about. And therefore the money available to pay attorneys to do right. work for them. Right? right. So big law working for a giant corporation that that is much more likely than working for like, yeah. So to put it another way, your the odds of an attorney working for Exxon Mobil are greater than the odds of that same attorney working for any professional any. sports organization in the entire world, let alone football. You're much more likely to work for specifically Exxon Mobil than you are to work for any professional sports organization in the entire world. And that's not to mention now, you know, what about Microsoft? What about Amazon? What about yeah. all these other gigantic corporations that might be even bigger than Exxon Mobil, where you might actually be more likely to work for those companies than you are to work for Exxon Mobil? Yeah. Which again, dwarfs all professional sports. So that type of a, I don't know, I, I would consider it probably a red flag to, if I saw that yep. in the application. I, it wouldn't be a point in your favor. You telling me about your per, your personal like athletic achievements could be a, a a point in your favor. No, it's just going from that to then. Oh, now I want to practice sports law. Do you know any attorneys that practice sports law? What specifically? What are you, do you even talking do? about? Sports yeah. law. Hmm. Sounds like you're interested in the idea, generally speaking, of law, and you like sports, and you want to <laughs> put them together and like have a great career. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Okay. How about this other question? One eighty. Yeah. Retaking the LSAT. Mm -hmm. I would take practice tests, Joe. And if your practice tests are, you know, like if two thirds of them are above one seventy five, I, I I don't see why you wouldn't take it again. It may not help with the top schools because your GPA is already precluding you from them, but it might help with some lower schools that are trying to aggressively play this game. Yeah, schools sometimes post their their LSAT range. Yeah, on their materials, and maybe they're gonna, you know, maybe they really want somebody with a one. They want to look people with one eighties come here. Yeah, you're only giving them an opportunity to anchor on the best part of your application, probably, right? By taking it again. Yeah, I mean they're concerned about your chops right when it comes to your 3.1 if you can say i got a 180 that just even more says i have horsepower let me let me try again <laughs> yeah does it move you know and it might not move the needle at 90 percent of the schools that you're going to apply to sure but it's the type of thing that you might do because you care about the other 10 percent of schools that you might apply to and who knows what somebody might randomly think when they see a 178 on your file and go, wow, that's the highest we've had in 10 years. Yeah. Thanks for writing in Joe. Email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening. Yeah.